Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. And we are going to jump into 3.3 today. So we're going to start looking at linear equations with two variables, okay? So we have, it says represent a relationship between two variables using a linear equation. So we're going to try and write an equation to represent all this information. So Dorothy has a younger brother, Ben, okay? And the table shows their ages over five years. So we're going to try and find an equation that we can write to do this. So when we're looking at a table, we typically call the top line X and the bottom line Y. This information is kind of irrelevant to us, okay? They're just saying in the year 2008, Ben was one, Dorothy was four. So we don't really need that information. I'm not overly concerned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little table, okay, of X and Y. So when Ben is one, Dorothy is four. When Ben is two, we get Dorothy is five. When we get three, we get six, so on and so forth. Now, some of you might see this pattern right away, and that's great, but sometimes certain ones are harder than others. So what I'm going to do is say, what do I need to do to X to get to Y? Well, to get from one to four, I could subtract, or I'm sorry, I could add three, or I could multiply by four. Okay, those are two options I could have. Well, 2 times 4 does not give me 5, right? So the times 4 doesn't work. But 2 plus 3 does give me 5. 3 plus 3 does give me 6. 4 plus 3 gives me 7. And 5 plus 3 gives me 8. So we try and find the pattern, okay? Now this is what we call a one-step equation, right? We only have to add 3 to it. But sometimes it will be two steps, okay? So if I were to write this as an equation, well, I can bring up my plus 3 here. X plus 3 equals Y. So there is my equation. Okay, I'm sorry, that looked more like a 4 than a Y. Okay. We also could have said we could have taken Dorothy's age, subtracted 3, and gotten X. Those are both the same thing. So if you saw it before I got to it, that's okay, and that's what it'll look like. Okay. So, Mr. Ford heated a liquid and measured its temperature. Miss Ford, I'm sorry. She recorded the results on the following table. Write a linear equation for the relationship between the time T and the liquid's temperature T. Now, this one's a little different, okay, compared to this other one. See how we're not starting at a zero point, but we are starting at a zero point here, okay? That's what we'll call the y-intercept later on in this chapter. Actually, next chapter. Um... So we're, we're going to focus on that for a second, okay? So again, I'm going to make this little table, and I'm going to go, okay, T to big T, okay? Because we tend to call time little t. That's why I have the little t here, and temperature is a big T. So we're going from 0 to 25, then we're going from 1 to 30, and then we're going from 2 to 35, 3 to 40, and 4 to 45, okay? Okay? Now, if I look here, I might be like, well, to get from 0 to 25, I have to add 25. But if I add 25 to 1, I'm not going to get 30. So plus 25 doesn't work. But remember how I said the 0 to 25 really makes a difference. So if I think about this, well, 0 plus 25 gives me uh, 25. So 25 plus what gives me 30? Well, 5 does. Okay. I'm going to write that just a wee bit smaller here. Okay. Well, then to get to 30 from 25, I'd have to add two fives, right? And to get to 40, I'd have to add five, three fives. Sorry, not 5 times 5. That should be a plus. And then we'll have to add four fives. To get from 25 to 45, right? Now, if you notice here, here I added one five, here I added two fives, here I added three fives, and four I added four fives. How convenient. So if I rewrite this, this would be five times one. And this one would be five times two. And this one would be 5 times 3. And here would be 5 times 4. 
Okay. So now I'm doing the 25 every single time. So I'm going to have 25 plus 5 because the 5 is the same every time. But the 1 value, 2, 3, and 4 value are the little t's, right? Because they're the exact same thing as 1, 2, 3, 4 here. And then my last value here is the big T. So when I do all of these things, it equals my big T. Now, this can be very difficult sometimes for students, but you can do it. We're going to keep practicing at it, okay? So this is where a two-step equation comes in. And a lot of times you'll know it's a two-step when we go from 0 to some larger number, okay? So you kind of got to see the pattern. Another way to see this is to see that we added 5 every time to this. And that's where the 5 times t comes into play as well. Okay. Now for something a little bit easier, we want to find the value of y when x is 7 for each of the following equations. All we're going to do is, is instead of writing x, we're going to write 7. So we're going to have y equals 7 minus 5 over 2. And then we're going to combine like terms. 7 minus 5 is 2 over 2, which equals 1. So when x is 7, y equals 1. Okay. Go ahead, why don't you try that on your own here. This time we're going to solve for y when x is 7. So we have 3y plus 4 equals 2 times 7. So we're going to have 3y plus 14. I'm sorry, 3y plus 4 equals 14. Now I'm going to solve for y like we've been doing. Okay, 14 minus 4 is 10. So I'll divide both sides by 3. So I'm going to get y equals 10 thirds. Again, I don't need to change that to a crazy fract or a crazy decimal or anything. 10 thirds is fine. Go ahead, why don't you try this one as well? So x is 7. So instead of writing x, I'm going to write 7. Okay, so then to get y by itself, I'm going to go ahead and add 15.5 to both sides. So 7 plus 15.5 would give me 22.5 equals 9 over 2y. Okay. Now I'm going to do this um, just in parts just because it's a decimal and a fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that 2 there. So I get 9y equals 2 times 22.5 would be 45. And then it's actually a nice pretty number for us. We'll divide both sides by 9. So we're going to get y equals 5. Okay. Now, I guarantee this question will be on the test. So please, please mark it, write study, okay? I know this is going to be on the test. So we're going to do what we did up here, but we're going to do it three separate times, okay? Now, we know in this problem how to get rid of the fractions, right? So we're going to go ahead and multiply everything by the common denominator, which is 2. So I'm going to multiply. I'll do this in a different color, actually. Multiply this piece by 2, this piece by 2, this piece by 2. So the 2's cancel here, so I'm left with y. 2 cancel here, so I'm left with 3x. And 2 times 2 is 4. Okay. So now that I've simplified my equation, I'm going to write x equals 1. So we're going to have y equals 3 times negative 1 plus 4. Well, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 4 will give me a positive 1. So I'm going to put a 1 there. Then I'm going to do this all over again. Same problem, but instead of writing 1, negative 1, I'm going to write 0. So y equals 3 times 0 plus 4. So y is equal to 0 plus 4, which conveniently is just 4. Okay. Why don't you try filling in this one? So y equals 3 times 1 plus 4. Sorry, that equals is not a z. So y equals 3 plus 4. And what is 3 plus 4? 7. Okay? So again, when you have to fill in a table of values, negative 1, 0, 1, you're going to plug in x is negative 1, x is 0, and x is 1, three separate times, starting the problem over, and then fill in the table. Okay? And again, you can get rid of that denominator if you'd like to make your problem a little bit easier. Okay. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you later. Bye.